Consul Jerry Tony Lada Neva Colonel Daihatsu Four wheel driver I'm going to take my metro To the disco Go to get in my car And I'll go go I'm going to take my metro To the disco With my foot down There's no go slow well, that was the big hit in all the typhoid resorts earlier this summer. That was Il Duce. I'm going to take my mezzo to the disco. Hi there, you're listening to Radio Milton Springsteen. Get down into Clown Town, get down and boogie. And if you've got nothing better to do than to sit and listen to me for the next three or four hours, you're pathetically inadequate and should probably get some sort of help. <laughs> Later on, we'll be talking to a friend of mine about some shoes he bought in a sale. But first... When little men start to talk with big guns and big men start to talk turkey, I'm the turkey they talk with. Sale's the name. Alexi Sale. Gumshoe. Seamus. Private Dick. Some say the private detective is a thing of the past. Others put forward a more cogent political argument, claiming that the very existence of a private sector automatically means less resources for the working classes. I wasn't entirely freelance. I worked on a retainer as a community detective for the Stoke Newington Community Law Centre, solving cases for the people. Seminars with young black kids, trying to persuade them that if they went into a police station they wouldn't automatically be murdered. They might just get away with a severe beating up. And there were many human tragedies. The all too common questions that desperate people want answers to, like, Lexi, where the hell can I get a vegetarian meal with a choice of starters and wine for under three quid? The only thing to do in cases like this is put your coat on and pound the streets. Looking for contacts, asking. We don't get Channel 4 round our way. We get our misery direct. It was Wednesday, May the 13th, 1981. Sirens screamed, dogs barked, cats howled, planes cooked, screwed out to the sky. Tortoises were playing Spanish tangos on bin lids. It was quiet, too quiet. I was in my office. I was wearing my ample Adidas dance pants, my Olympus running shoes with the spikes on the inside for greater pain and greater guilt, and my tour jacket with Black Death Tour of Europe 1348 to 1349 written across the back. My hair was by Keith at Stink, and my badges by Just Badges of Islington. I felt like a million dollars and looked like a right cunt. I started asking myself questions. What's it all for? What's it all about? What's it all about? Hello, Alexei. Dave the technician here. Uh, in response to your question, what's it all about? Well, you put your left leg in, you put your left leg out, you do the hokey-cokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. That's one mystery cleared up, anyway. Do you get depressed? I do. You know those days when the useless, useless cartoons just don't seem funny? Well, Chris came round last night, and apparently Judith left him, and she's taken all the Style Council albums, so it looks pretty final. Apparently Judith accused Chris of subverting the socialist government in Nicaragua. I think she's getting really paranoid. Then she started giving Chris a hard time about stuffing his bicycle magazines down the waste disposal. They really live on the edge, don't they? Chemistry teachers. There was a knock at the door. A man walked in. I said hello. He said hello. I showed him a chair. He showed me a keyring he'd bought in Marbella. He was Big Ralph, the laundromat king. A man so tough that the Cray twins used to give him their number six coupons. What can I do you for, Mr. R? I quipped. What can I do you for? <laughs> it's good, that, isn't it, eh? You know, it's one of the sort of things I'm really into at the moment, you know, saying kind of witty, informal things to put people at their ease, you know. So I turned to him and I said, Do you know that a swan can break a man's arm with one beat of his wing? So he said... Do you know that the Eskimos have 26 different names for snow? So I said, do you know that Birmingham has more miles of canals than Venice? Shut up, you stupid fucking bastard, or I'll fucking kill ya, said Big Ralph. Listen, John, I've come to see you about a bird. 
I looked at him steadily. Tell me your problems, Mr. R, I sighed. But please, cut out the sexist terminology, okay? That's the Doral Porsche and Mike Napolo. Metro. 09 Triumph for Graham and Bullo. Metro. Wilsey Riley, Rover 10 and Nova. Metro. Starlet Visa, Cavalier and Fuego. I'm going to take my Metro to the disco. Get in my car and we'll go. Okay, that was Il Duce and take my metro to the discount. Now, if you go into your local charge shop and buy that record, they're giving away a free mini metro with every one. So that should be going from 0 to 60 up the charts in no time at all. Okay, fantastic. You're listening to Radio Milton Springsteen, and now we've got episode two of Alexis Sale and the Fish People. And in episode two, Big Ralph at Reposes. Got a Civic Morgan and Marina. Reliant, Escort and Estrada. Chega, Skoda, Estrada. I'll come to see you about a bird. I looked at him steadily. Tell me your problems, Mr. Ara, side. But please, cut the sexist terminology, OK? Nah, John, don't be thick. We're all aware of the offensive nature of oppressive sexist language round our way, John. I'm talking about a real bird with wings and feathers and a little beaky weaky. It's my budgie, Ardiman. He's varnished. What, I said, you mean he's been covered in a clear coating of polyurethane? Nah, do leave off, John. I mean, he's varnished. He's gone. He's disappeared. My heart sank to me boots. Another lost budgie. My 27th this week, and it was only Wednesday. I was sick of dragging beard baths and going up to people and saying... Do you recognise this budgie? Lost budgies ain't my line, Mr. R. I lied. Don't wind me up, John. You looking to have your epiglottis removed or what? There's a lot more at stake here than a lost budgie, John. This is so big, it's bigger than a really big thing. It's bigger than the most enormous thing that you saw the other day. That's how big it is. I showed interest. I did this just using the expression on me face. I didn't have to say anything. Me facial expression communicated everything. I was interested. That's a thing I'm really into at the moment, you know, like um, body language, you know. Like your voice is saying one thing, but your body is saying another, you know. Like your voice is saying, I want to go to Habitat, but your body keeps taking you to MFI, you know. Or, um, like your voice is saying, I want to go to the toilet, but your body's saying some really interesting facts about cheese. So, I mean, you know, I mean, what are we talking about? Martians, said Big Ralph. Alexi, uh, it's the engineer here. Can we hold it a minute? I'm getting a bit confused. Who just said Martians? Big Ralph. In reply to the question, what are we talking about? No, that was a sort of extended interruption to the narrative flow. Structurally speaking, this is very deep, you know. I mean, there's a lot of different levels going on. Well, can we try to keep the levels down a bit? Do you mean you want me to say it quieter? Yes, and could we have less jokes about cross-purpose conversations, please? Okay. By the way, did you hear about Chris and Judith? What, splitting up? Yeah, Chris came round last night, and, you know, and he told me. Well, we'd better not mention anything to Pauline for a bit, do you reckon? Yeah, that's what I thought. OK to carry on? Yeah. OK, and take it again from Martians.